Hello, Fantastic Beast fans. Grindelwald has been preaching ardently that magical should not have to live in secrecy. Perhaps in Crimes of Grindelwald, he takes his first step in lifting this veil, at least in Paris. I'm Susan Chapal of Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts to bring you the clues. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you'll be notified when videos post and won't miss out on the next clues. As I'm noting in every video now, with the richness of detail that has been released, there may be spoilers ahead. So proceed here and in the comments below with extreme caution. Also, don't click away before the very end because I've tacked on a short theory about the new poster released today. Shar Mason emailed me a very tantalizing theory a few days ago that's had my brain cells spinning ever since. Shar is a long-term follower of my theories ever since my days of posting Harry Potter clues on my writer's blog. She said, in the Grindelwald escape scenes, I think the water is the thief's downfall, what the Gringotts goblins use to wash away enchantments. It doesn't say goblins created that magic, only that they use it. It would make sense for Grindelwald to use decoys to carry out his escape, but would want to protect himself from the Macusa ministry doing the same back to him. That footage certainly looks like Grindelwald, then someone else. Thanks so much, Tashar. Now, if you'll remember from Deathly Hallows in the Gringotts chapter, the thief's downfall was a powerful waterfall that poured over the cart track and derailed Harry, Hermione, Ron, Griphook, and Bogrod, one of Gringotts' bank tellers, on their way to the Lestrange vault. It washed away all the enchantments of Hermione polyjuiced as Bellatrix, Ron's concealments, and the imperious curse on Bogrod. I think Rowling would be sorely tempted to use a spell displayed en route to the Lestrange vault in London in a film that includes a probable scene en route to the Lestrange vault in Paris. When I asked Char how she thought the use of the thief's downfall would play out in Crimes of Grindelwald, she said, as two people are in the carriage and the person who looks like Grindy changes to Abernathy, Grindy polyjuiced or transfigured himself to appear as the person driving the carriage. Grindy loses, accidentally or on purpose, his disguise and uses a spell to cast that water to reveal the fake Grindy inside the carriage with the purpose of giving the other passenger guarding the Abernathy Grindy the opportunity to join him in his cause because he isn't about killing witches and wizards unless they try to stop him in his goal to bring the wizarding world out of hiding. Perhaps that Macusa person could be of benefit to Grindy, just like Abernathy. I have to say, I love Char's thinking and her theory explains so much. Like why Grindy is shown wearing different clothes as part of the escape scene. Surely he's not so vain that he took time for a wardrobe change. And why we see him as the driver entering the coach rather than escaping from it, as well as the quote, join me or die. But the more I thought about Char's great catch, the more I wondered if we'd seen the thief's downfall used elsewhere later in the film. I've been pondering this scene with Queenie for quite a while, especially as it has now appeared in two trailers with Queenie looking even more anguished in the second than the first. First, I wondered if there was a connection between the umbrella beside Queenie and the one Jacob has repeatedly been pictured with, both in the film and in his Lego piece and in the Comic-Con poster. Then there is this tantalizing image of someone walking in the rain under this huge umbrella but we can't get a glimpse of who. Now I'm wondering if the film comes full circle from the thief's downfall at the beginning to this deluge at the end, and if Queenie might be suffering from its repercussions. What if Rowling had Grindelwald employ the thief's downfall at the beginning of the film, not merely as fan service to Gringotts and the Deathly Hallows, but to also remind and prepare us for an even bigger downfall at the end of the film. We all know that Grindelwald wants to free the Magicals from the oppressive secrecy they live under. It's the first step in dominating the Muggles. 
So what if he takes a huge step towards this at the end of the film? But a simple Revelio spell would not do. It'll have to be something more complicated, perhaps involving the awesome power of the Elder One. We've seen Grindelwald's banners flying through the streets of Paris, showing it coming increasingly under his control, towering, billowing clouds foretelling a storm. But is this a magical one, with rain like the thief's downfall, pouring through those enchanted banners and stripping them away to reveal the Ministry of Magic, Rue Claudel, and all the other magical secrets to the non-magique? And would this happen before or after the amphitheater? I think before, and here's why. We see a lot of rain in the beginning of the film, and what appears to be near the end, tying Grindelwald's escape to the climax in Paris. Jacob might be carrying an umbrella to protect him from magical rain, as we saw what it did to his memory last time in New York. But in reality, it's a reminder to us of what magical rain can do, and a nod for what's to come with Queenie. At the moment Queenie is crouched in the rain, I think her own spell of enchantment has been lifted by this magnified thief's downfall. Perhaps she's even been operating under a spell cast by Grindelwald or Abernathy, who would have close access to Queenie. Maybe he even put her under the Imperious charm. Perhaps one of them even gave her a magical umbrella to keep her from having her enchantments washed away in what was to come. But something happened. Her umbrella dropped, and with the enchantment gone, she realized exactly what terrible things she's done in Grindelwald's service and is devastated. Then we see her at the amphitheater. Here's a new image I didn't have last time of her with Jacob. Notice how scraggly her hair is, as if it's recently been wet. Also, notice how Jacob seems not to be paying any attention to her whatsoever, totally unlike him, especially compared to this other new image. I proposed in an earlier video that the people in the amphitheater at some point might be frozen, or perhaps stunned. What if, in another nod to the Order of the Phoenix, when Dumbledore stuns Umbridge and Dawlish and Knightley before apparating out with Fox, Grindelwald stuns a whole amphitheater full of people, except for his followers, whether it's to allow them to exit before he releases the dragon or some other reason, I'm not sure. Queenie takes this stunned moment to say goodbye to Jacob and perhaps whisper a secret him, still to come, because I believe Queenie's still in Grindelwald's service. Instead of fleeing from his control, she may choose to remain with Grindelwald to make things right to undo the harm she's brought about, either as a double agent a la Snape or to blow up his control center, Normengard. So with this new theory, I don't think Queenie will be sacrificed like I proposed in my last video. Everything else I mentioned though in the last one I still believe in, about her role in obtaining something from the French ministry and her association with that necklace remain the same, especially her fate left on a huge cliffhanger if she's involved in that explosion at Nurmengard. One other idea that I've been toying with for a while that I now believe relates to this magical reign. What if Grindelwald had used this gathering at the amphitheater mainly as a trap to lure those he needs for his plan? Credence and Leda, plus all those opposing him, those who block his taking control of Paris, to eliminate them all at once. For example, the fire dragon is shown preparing to attack Jacob, with Tina coming to his rescue. I've always wondered, why Jacob? But now I'm wondering, how can he see it? Jacob's a muggle, and he's seeing something that may not be visible to most muggles. Maybe. Contrast that to Hogwarts, where he's not. He's looking away from the castle because he cannot see it. Is this showing us that the enchantments protecting magical Paris from muggle eyes have truly been lifted? Finally, whether Queenie is acting under the imperious charm or her own choice, I do think her eyes are opened in that rain. Somehow Grindelwald has been manipulating her and she's now hearing the truth and facing the tormenting role she played. And perhaps 
Rowling chose Queenie for this role to show us how even well-meaning people can get blinded from the truth when we let our own desires rule us. I want to thank Shar again for sharing her theory with me. So what do you think? Will we see the thief's downfall at either the beginning or end of the film? And do you think the amphitheater scene is a well-laid trap? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Also, please check out my new fan shop on Amazon for books and Funko Pops and wands and all things Fantastic Beasts. So, a new and final poster was released today as I was finishing up edits on this video, and I want to make two comments about it. One, does the position of the Eiffel Tower in the place of the Elder Wand hint at a theory I've been fond of for a while? That the French ministry is located in or under the tower? After all, the tower is aligned in a position of magical power, just as the ministry is. And two, is it possible Queenie is being shown with a baby bump, as Nicola and I have been speculating on Twitter? Or is that just her posture and slim-fitting clothes? To be honest, both Nicola and I are unsure, but are excited about the possibility. What do you think? 